Hello friends, this is Paul Finley. And I'm going to be narrating this wonderful article on gospel music and its development. Um, this is from a book published in 1976 called The Folk Music Source Book by Larry Sandberg and Dick Wiseman, published by Alfred A. Knopf. And the article itself that was written in the book was written by Wesley Westbrooks, he himself an African-American, who really seems to know his stuff on this subject and its development. So remember, though, this is already a, about a 50-year-old article, um, but he hits it right on the head. So let's begin. Nothing Has Changed But the Tempo by Wesley Westbrooks. On the west bank of the Wachita River, that is O-U-A, Cheetah River, is the city of Arkadelphia, Arkansas, which has often been called a city of talent. During World War I, there were some influential colleges in the area, including Wachita Baptist College and what is now known as Henderson State Teachers College. And on the west end of town, there were two important schools, the Presbyterian Academy and the Baptist Academy for Blacks. Arkadelphia was a city of talent for two primary reasons, Doodley Williams and Christine Hunter. Doodley Williams was an unusually talented man. Though he had no formal education or musical training, he could learn to play any instrument in a matter of hours. Not only learn to play, he mastered the instrument, worked the standard melodic lines, and then improvised whether he was handling strings or brass. In addition, Williams was an expert singer. Students at various colleges invited him to perform during the 20s and 30s and usually ended up giving him money. He knew more songs than he ever had time to sing, which really baffled his audiences was where he had learned them all. Christine Hunter was an accomplished pianist as well as a singer. When she and Doodley got together at the Arkadelphia Methodist Church on Sunday nights, the place was always packed. As a combo, they were truly miraculous. After hearing a song on the radio once, they could play and sing it. How, I don't know. This is what we call playing by ear. Most Arkadelphia concerts, especially church programs, were held in the west end of town. There were three black churches, all of which still exist today, that dominated the religious life of the area. The sanctified church always had a pianist present. They'd sing a song and testify, and each time it would be in a different key. The songs were always up-tempo songs. The Baptist church was a middle-of-the-road church, but the Methodists swung their gospel songs, especially when Christine and Doodley appeared. In those days, invitations to a revival were sent out by the winds without any formal announcement to people in other churches. People would come all the way from Hot Springs, a much larger town, some 29 miles distant, and the word would be passed around. When the gospel revival began, the singing could be heard throughout the west end of Arkadelphia. In fact, many radio stations today are playing songs from those years. The rhythm's different, however, although the words may be the same. People in the west end sang, Oh, Happy Day, 35 years before it became a nationwide hit in America. By 1935, a lot of younger people had left Arkansas and gone to Chicago and St. Louis. When they returned home, they brought the latest word on what was happening to gospel music in the big cities. Wednesday night was a prayer meeting night, and all the youngsters listened to the service. To this day, I've never seen music printed that matches the way they sang their songs. One person would walk into the church and start singing. This time, another year, I may be dead and gone. If the church was empty, the singer would just pick up the theme and repeat it until someone came in and took it over from him. The chord pattern was usually one, four, five, and then a dominant five, then back to one. But I've never seen it captured exactly as it sounded, even by gospel music writers who come from this same background. The singer sang from a special feeling and minutes later, the church would be filled. 
The youngsters were still outside during the prayer service, and the prayers were sung. The young people could say the prayers because they were usually the same from week to week. They knew who was testifying or singing these songs. This type of prayer service still exists today. So many people eventually went to Chicago that one couldn't walk two blocks on the south side without seeing somebody from Arkadelphia. And all the little towns on the outskirts of Arkadelphia, Manchester, Gum Springs, Curtis, Gurdon, Shady Grove, and Amity were producing gospel sounds as each generation grew up. Things started moving faster in the years from 1936 to 1938. People traveled more. In Kansas City, they used a jazzier beat, but in Chicago, one could find all the styles because so many people came from different places. During World War II, some of the people who sang gospel music traveled all over the world, and they brought back new songs and styles. Thomas Dorsey, the composer of Precious Lord, Take My Hand, and the Roberta Martin singers became popular. Some ministers didn't like the new styles of gospel music, Roberta Martin wrote a song, God is Still on the Throne, which became accepted everywhere. I remember one city in Italy where a group sang many of the Roberta Martin singers' songs and sang them very well. Although jazz gradually became more influential at the end of the war, many of the churches in the cities like Chicago, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., and Baltimore held on to the traditional gospel music. The staple singers came out of Mississippi to Chicago and sang there at the Roebuck Staples Brothers Church. They did one tune in particular, Uncloudy Day, which launched them on a successful singing career. Quartet singing originated during the early 30s. It is a combination of hymnal, jazz, and rock music with guitars and drums as accompaniments. Many black ministers sang in quartets while attending college. They would perform in school auditoriums because they were not allowed to sing in the Baptist or Methodist churches. Even today, in many of the larger churches with black ministers who have had formal college training, the ministers still resent this type of singing. After the war, the door swung open to gospel music. With people leaving the South and moving north and west, the field of gospel music was more widely spread. Because so many men had been in the army, women began to dominate the recording of gospel music. Some of the first women to achieve popularity were the St. Paul Choir of Los Angeles, Bessie Griffin, the Davis Sisters, and the famous Caravans. Mahalia Jackson was a Baptist minister's daughter, and she knew how to get the churches to support her singing. As gospel music achieved prominence, the staple singers became the number one group in popularity. They are now a gospel rock group, and with this slight change, they have become known throughout the world with such tunes as Respect Yourself, I'll Take You There, and Be What You Are. Some other gospel artists that have made the Top 100 record chart are the Art Reynolds singers with Glory Glory and the Edwin Hawkins singers with Oh Happy Day. The Mighty Clouds of Joy have recently joined the list with their hit single, Time. I can't say enough about the singers that are listed in this chapter of the record guide. As you can see, gospel music has various styles, and with its increase in versatility, it is becoming more and more accepted throughout the world. It's moving along with the times. The following records are vocal-oriented, with instrumental accompaniment of various kinds. Any instrumental solo record is indicated by the abbreviation INSTL. And a quick rundown here of these artists that are listed in this book. Again, this is published in 1976. We've got Gene Ammons, Inez Andrews, Art Reynolds Singers, Beverly Glenn Concert Chorale, Alfred Bolden, Reverend Alex Bradford, Reverend Shirley Caesar, Reverend Shirley and the Caesar Singers, the Davis Sisters, Dixie Hummingbirds, and the Angelic Gospel Singers. Edwin Hawkins singers. Hey, it keeps on coming. The famous caravans, Aretha Franklin, Aretha with James Cleveland and the Southern California Community Choir, Reverend C.L. and Aretha Franklin, Ernest Franklin, Grant Green, Bessie Smith, the Harmonizing Four, 
Harold Smith, Majestic Choir featuring James Cleveland, Mahalia Jackson, B.B. King, Hubert Laws, The Mighty Clouds of Joy, Robert Martin Singers, Reverend Cleafus Robinson, I love that name, St. Paul Church Choir of Los Angeles, Salem Travelers, Sensational Symbols, The Staple Singers, Clara Ward, and Maceo Woods. And there you have it, folks. That's a good looking into. So, now you go looking into. Thank you. Hello, friends. This is Paul Finley, and I'm going to be narrating this one... Crap.